stories. away through where there seemed to be none and Shelton is back to it's Maradona's goal and England claimed that it was put in with the hand and Maradona handled it in when he described his goal as the hand of God I, I thought well, what cheek <laughs> that was my first reaction how can he say such a thing but the goal stands clearly put in with the hand and Maradona handled it in de ninguna manera, o sea, quise, quise faltar respeto a nadie. Yo, yo me, en, el, en, el, en, el, en el adentro mío me seguí divirtiendo con, con, como cuando era chiquito. Y tuve la suerte de que Dios eh, me, me hiciera valer este gol y nada más. Later in the same match, he went on to score one of the best goals ever seen in the finals a golden moment in a life that has swung between triumph and disgrace. In the 1994 World Cup, Maradona scored another spectacular goal. Humiliation followed when he was kicked out of the competition for drug taking. But Maradona wasn't finished. Diego Armando Maradona is one of the greatest footballers of all time. Banned from playing after the last World Cup, he has defied the authorities and got a job as a manager. This is his first game in charge of Mandiju of Corrientes, a team fighting relegation from Argentina's Premier League. A stunning goal from Mandiju. Maradona has lost none of his passion for the game. Me, lo que pienso los demás. Me importa muy poco. Me importa muy poco porque sabes lo que pasa que nunca van a poder alcanzar el grado, el grado de alegría y de tristeza que puedo alcanzar yo porque nunca van a estar en mi lugar. Es muy fácil decir, Maradona tendría que haber hecho esto. ¿Cómo? Si vos no llegás ni, no, no llegás ni, ni a tener los problemas chiquitos que tiene Maradona ni las alegrías grandes que tiene Maradona. ¿Me entendés? Por eso yo digo que son, cuando, cuando hablan por mí, cuando hablan por mí, los, los grandes que dicen que tienen la, la verdad, digo que son mentirosos. The Slum of Fiorito in the outskirts of Buenos Aires. Little has changed since its most famous son was born here 34 years ago. Diego Maradona was raised in this house, one of eight children. The young boys of today still see football as a way out of the shantytown and Maradona has shown them it can be done. 
They dream of being discovered as a young football prodigy, just as he was 25 years ago. A TV crew came to film him as rumours spread of a sensationally gifted 10-year-old. You didn't need to be an expert on football to realise that you were looking at something special. He was a natural. There was nothing that I could teach him. He had it all. When he played with his friend Gojo from Fiorito, they were magic. They were spectacular. I never saw anyone play that way with Diego. Sometimes we did things that we weren't supposed to. We used to dodge fares on the train so that we had enough money for a pizza and a coke after games. But we weren't all bad. After matches, we always stayed together to talk about the game. Where he went, I went. We were inseparable. They are great memories that I will never forget. Goyo's way out of Fiorito was barred when he injured his knee playing football. He never moved from his childhood home, watching Diego's career from afar. Dios nos dio camino distinto. God gave us different paths to follow. De felicidad. He gave Diego a path of fame and fortune. Otherwise, he would be living like me, unable to escape from the poverty of our childhood. That's why I say we have different destinies, because my path has remained poverty. But Maradona soon escaped Fiorito, making his professional debut at the age of 15. Fame and riches followed. To his father, of native Indian extraction, it was a dream come true. The family moved to an affluent new home. The wildest expectations of his mother, an immigrant from Italy, were fulfilled. Diego began dating the middle-class girl next door, Claudia Vigifani. Life was transformed for Maradona. The teenage idol had become the breadwinner for the entire family. But Maradona had dreams of his own. My dream is to be two. My first dream is to play in the World Cup. And the second dream is to be the champion of the octava and the ones who continue in the champion of the world. In 1979, Argentinians watched Diego lead his country to victory in the World Youth Cup held in Japan. The fascist generals ruling Argentina exploited the propaganda value of the triumph. But the 16-year-old Maradona had no time for politics. He used to be puzzled when world stars refused to play in his homeland. Es que a mí me sorprende mucho cuando el flaco Cruz no viene a jugar en el 78, ¿no? Porque decían que habían desaparecido en Buenos Aires. Entonces decíamos, pero ¿por qué no viene a jugar? El fútbol que tiene que ver con con los militares. Hoy, hoy estamos en el 94. Yo aplaudo al flaco Cruz, porque yo tampoco hoy iría a jugar al Salvador, iría a jugar, no iría a jugar a, a Guatemala, por ejemplo, no iría a jugar por lo desaparecido. Porque creo, creo en la justicia social y creo que, que todos tenemos derecho a vivir. ¿Me entendés? Todos tenemos derecho. Pero ¿qué pasa? Acá no ha, en este país nos ha, nos ha mentido tanto, nos han mentido tanto, 
que no sabíamos para dónde correr. Now politically outspoken, the young Maradona was blind to the evils of the fascist regime. The generals responsible for the disappearance of over 15,000 Argentinians used football to placate the masses. Maradona was the most powerful symbol of the country's footballing success. In 1981, he helped Boca to the national championship. Other honours followed. He felt almost too blessed. After a world record transfer to Barcelona, Maradona left the new world for the old and set out for Spain. Those who discovered him were left behind in the superstar's wake. When he slipped through my fingers, I felt I was losing the best thing in my life. He had given me so much happiness. From the touchline, I watched him grow up and his ability gave me so much pleasure. I looked after him as if he was my treasure, and then he was gone. The Spanish crowds expected miracles from Maradona, but targeted by opponents, he was unable to adapt to the Spanish game. For the first time, he knew rejection and failure. He was booed as an Indian no-hoper from Latin America. The 1981 season ended in disaster. A savage tackle broke his ankle, putting him out of football for a year. His friends have never forgotten how he was treated. In Spain, Diego was attacked by everyone. They used to insult us and Diego was under a lot of pressure. Then came the foul that broke his ankle and Diego had to undergo intensive physiotherapy. Supervised by his doctor, I was his physio, and it took two months before he could walk again. Maradona recovered in time for the World Cup, held in Spain. It was the stage that would enable him to regain his reputation. But frustrated by poor results and harsh tackles, Maradona lashed out against Brazil. He was sent off in shame. It was 1982. As his own world crumbled, his country lost the Falklands War. Maradona had to face the painful truth. There was a famous canal, o sea, famous, the canal estatal, the 7, that gave us Bajamos eh, tres eh, Sea Harrier, eh, bajamos eh, ocho aviones. Mentira, no podíamos bajar ni un pajarito nosotros. Y vos preguntáselo a Ardiles, que nosotros fuimos convencidos de acá de que, de que íbamos ganando la guerra, y aunque no nos guste la guerra, nos gusta siempre que la, la bandera argentina esté arriba, como todo, yo como creo que, que lo haría cualquier patriota. Porque yo creo, creo que, hay que, que hay que amar a su país a pesar de cualquier cosa. Y cuando llegamos a España, nos dimos cuenta de la realidad. 
y fue un golpe tremendo para todos. The troubled star turned to his family for moral support and to Corrientes, the small provincial town his father came from. On his return, Maradona saw more clearly than ever the social and racial divides of his homeland. Far from the capital where the white elite run the country, this is the other Argentina. Like Maradona's father, many have native Indian blood. Many Mandiju players are of Indian descent. Despite all his riches, even today Maradona sees himself as a spokesman for the poor and uneducated. A los jugadores de fútbol los creen todos, todos ignorantes, como que jugar al fútbol y nada más. Y no es así. O sea, si nosotros venimos de abajo, cuando llegamos a, a ser alguien, lo que defendemos es lo que nosotros vivimos. No queremos que haya más eso. ¿Me entendés? O sea, gente que, que, que le dan... Eh, la naranja de segunda mano, las papas de segunda mano, todo de segunda mano, o de, por decir de segunda mano. Pues yo viví en una villa y yo lo, yo lo viví eso, ¿me entendés? Entonces, pues, ¿por qué? Porque, porque el jugador de fútbol, o el jugador de fútbol eh, eh, llega arriba y, no, y tiene que ser jugador de fútbol y nada más, a mí no me va. Yo, por más que sea jugador de fútbol, voy a seguir hablando. Y voy a seguir, voy a seguir contestándole al poder y a decirle por qué hay una desigualdad tan grande. A barbecue for the struggling Mandiju team. For the players, it's a privilege to have the superstar as their manager. For Maradona, it's always a comfort to be back in the world of his father, Don Diego. Creo, creo mucho más en la, en la humildad y en la sinceridad del provinciano que en, la, que en la viveza y la picardía del porteño, totalmente. Y te está hablando uno que, que vive en Buenos Aires y que, y que quizás por ahí tengo algunas vivezas de porteño, alguna picardía de porteño que no, que no, que no me hacen feliz realmente porque, porque terminan la pavada, la pavada del porteño, la, 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 la joda del porteño diciéndolo cabecita negra al provinciano, eh, tratándolo, tratándolo eh, con, mucha, con, mucha, con mucha soberbia. But there is no avoiding Buenos Aires. Of 20 Premier League sides, 14 come from the capital. On his arrival for today's game, Maradona is fated by fans from the rival club. The boy from the city slums is a unique figure in Argentina, revered by everyone outside the establishment. The match is a relegation dogfight that Mandiju can't afford to lose. La presencia de Maradona ha turned a routine fixture into a crowd puller. Mandiju soon go 1-0 down. As ever, the eyes of the media are on Maradona, banned from the touchline as he's yet to qualify as a manager. The pressure mounts. As disaster looms, Mandiju grab a last minute equalizer. Everyone wants a piece of Diego. It's something he's long grown used to. After his failures in Spain, 
Many thought Maradona would never conquer the old world. But he was soon to prove them wrong in Italy, the land of his mother's birth. Naples, 1984. To the Spanish, Maradona had been an expensive flop. Neapolitans hoped he'd be the new footballing messiah who'd break the domination of the rich clubs of the north. 50,000 turned up at their stadium just to welcome him with open arms. When we to the cancha, when we arrived at the stadium in Naples, it was packed. Everyone was crying out for the new idol. Even I started crying because I never imagined a greeting like that one. I realized then that we were about to begin a new era. We had left the hell of Barcelona and arrived in heaven. The Neapolitan fans quickly sensed that the star from the slums of Buenos Aires was a kindred spirit. Breaking every record in the world's toughest league, the little Argentinian became an Italian folk hero. Almost single-handedly, he set Naples onto a relentless rise to the top. The fans responded with adoration. Even the Pope was delighted to grant Maradona an audience. Bueno, El norte me dijo que yo me agrandaba, que yo esto, que yo lo otro. A mí no me importó eso. A mí lo único que me importó es haber, haberle dado la, la felicidad que le dimos nosotros a la gente de Nápoles. Y eso no, eso no me lo va a poder quitar nadie. Summer 1986, the World Cup finals in Mexico. Maradona captained the Argentinian side that fate had pitted against England in the quarterfinals. It was only four years after the Falklands War. We didn't fear him, but we respected him. We knew he was a constant danger. We knew he could win a match in five seconds or ten seconds with an astute pass or a clever dribble or a, a surprise wonderful shot. And uh, so he was always going to be very dangerous. His opponents had feared Maradona's feet, not his hands. And I was instantly aware that he'd handled it and, and for a couple of seconds didn't panic. And then I suddenly realized that everybody was running back to the halfway line, including the referee and the linesman. And my instant reaction was, hey, they haven't seen this. And then suddenly it all dawned on me that this was a goal, he, you know, and we were worn down 
and, and it stood. Controversy over the first goal was eclipsed by the 10 seconds of brilliance that preceded the next one. Cuando enganché la primera vez y vi que eh, Reed no me podía agarrar, ahí me agarró, me agarró unas ganas de seguir corriendo muy, muy grandes, que los rivales iban, iban pasando y, y no me podían alcanzar, o sea, yo veía que tenía una marcha más. Cuando yo encaro a Fenwick, que se la tiro adelante, Fenwick por más que me tirara con el camión, por más que me, me tira el codo en la cara, no me podía parar, ya venía muy lanzado. Entonces cuando lo veo a Shilton, en ese momento que le voy a, le voy a, le voy a pegar, Lo veo a Shilton que se tira y queda todo desparramado porque Shilton no sabe dónde, dónde iba a patear yo. Porque yo le aguanto, le aguanto, tal es así que le aguanto tanto que cuando yo la toco, a mí se me tira el, el, el rubio, el, el, el seis, el central, se me tira y me, me pega en la derecha, pero yo ya venía con tanto, con tanto, con tanta carga que yo lo aguanto con la derecha y le pego con la izquierda así para asegurar. O sea, el, el hecho, de, el hecho de, de, de haber hecho ese gol es ese gol soñado, el gol, el gol que. Que, que todo el mundo quisiera hacer, no, no, no en un mundial, en un partido donde juegan con, con los amigos. Yo tuve la suerte y, y digo que, que le tengo que agradecer a Dios que lo hice en un mundial. ¿no? For many Argentinians, it was sweet and bloodless revenge. It was an incredible goal, and everybody just held up their hands in, in amazement, in admiration, and said, "This guy's a genius." You know, when you're talking about Pele, and you're talking about Joan Cruyff. And you're talking about Beckenbauer, you have to talk about Maradona. Uh, he was w one of the greatest players of all time in, in, in world soccer. Amid national euphoria, Argentina got to the final. In the seclusion of their hotel, players staved off pre-match nerves by making a private video. Nacido? En Buenos Aires. Eh, ¿Edad? ¿Edad? Argentina. 25 años. 25 años. ¿Casado? No, no, soltero, soltero. Por ahora soltero. Soltero. Ese signo? Escorpio. 30 de octubre. 30 de octubre. Ajá. Bien, bien. Estamos al lado. Oh, it was a great feeling being next to the number one player in the world. Para uno era un orgullo estar. We were all proud of sharing moments on and off the pitch with him. Dentro de la cancha, si no fuera junto a él, ¿no? We were all equal, and we did many things, like this home video. It shows Diego's sense of humor. Por Bilardo, por, por muchas concentraciones anteriores, que esto iba a ser así, y, y yo creo que todos somos profesionales como para saber aguantar eh, estos dos meses. Y, y si hay algún suplementario más, estamos, estamos completamente convencidos de aguantar. Muy bien, muy bien, muy bien. Y cuando formamos para. Diego was always the first to encourage us before a game started. As a captain, that's crucial. He is always raring to go, and of course, that makes him a great motivator. Someone who shirks from the responsibility placed on a captain is useless. Diego embraces it. He gives you strength and courage, and all this from the best player in the world. In the final, Maradona led Argentina to victory over West Germany. These years were the high point of his career. All his childhood dreams were realized. In 1987, just a year later, he led Naples to the Italian League and Cup double. The fans exploded in worship 
Maradona was the most famous footballer in the world. Yo no, no puedo, así como no dejo que, que digan que, que Maradona es más que mi madre, Maradona es más que Dios, yo no lo entiendo. The neglected city of the south had trounced the rich boys of the north and Naples could hardly contain its pleasure. Maradona had conquered the world of football. But when he tried to step outside it, he was to make powerful enemies keen to see his downfall. <laughs> Worshipped by fans, Maradona started to speak out against the footballing authorities. ¿Por qué jugamos a las 12 del mediodía? ¿Por qué se juega un partido a las 3 de la tarde con 70 grados de calor? Si nosotros somos los que metemos la cara. Pues yo te lo dije. Dale un par de botines a Avalanche. Dale un pantaloncito corto a Blatter. ¿Sabe qué ridículo que queda? Entonces vamos, vamos, vamos a hacer las cosas respetuosamente para los jugadores y respetuosamente para los dirigentes. Porque acá no se trata de basurear a los dirigentes. Acá se trata de ponernos a sen sentarnos en una mesa y ponernos a discutir cosas para mejorar. Pero ¿qué pasa? Si vos tenés al capo de la mafia que dice esto se hace así y se hace así, no. No, no. Yo creo que tengo, tengo la edad suficiente como para decir no. <laughs> By his mid-twenties, the superstar had found new idols outside football. He twice paid well-publicized visits to the most famous left-winger of them all. To Maradona, Castro is a man of honor and a friend of the poor. <laughs> Se vino sin la gorrita para que no se la quite esta vez. <risa> no, porque me peiné. <risa> y, y si me pongo la gorrita. Se despeina. Se despeino, pero la puedo mandar a buscar. Sí, porque me la va a dejar. A ver, se la va a pegar. Y yo le traje una camiseta nueva. Una camiseta de este. Voy a defender a Fidel a muerte porque lo quiero. Porque creo de que es el último, el último gran político, el último gran patriarca. Y que todos los políticos que hay hoy no le llegan ni al tobillo a Fidel. Porque eso, eso es defender, eso defender por amor a su gente. Y si hablan de guerra, la guerra que le hicieron a Fidel es mucho más grave que la guerra que, que, que la guerra que le hizo Irak a Kuwait. Es mucho más grave. Hay chicos que mueren de hambre. Hay chicos que mueren sin remedios. Hay gente que se muere de hambre por el, por el embargo. ¿Y eso qué es? Y sin embargo... Ese hombre de barba los tiene bien puesto. To the Argentine establishment, such views are outrageous. But the world famous player, exploited years before by the fascist generals, now had his own agenda. Maradona delights in flouting criticism that he's got above his station. In 1989, Catholic Argentina was aghast to see him marry Claudia Vigifane, his live-in girlfriend for over a decade, in Argentina's most prestigious cathedral. To add insult to injury, their two daughters were the bridesmaids. The entire Naples team was flown in for the occasion, shared with family and friends from Corrientes and the slums of his childhood. Eleven hundred people were invited to the reception which followed, the biggest the city had ever seen. The president was not invited, nor were the football authorities. 
Maradona was king. It seemed Maradona couldn't put a foot wrong. Songs like this sanctified him. For the poor of Argentina, he was a new Evita, a symbol that they too could make it. To much of the world's footballing public, he was a sporting superhero, a victorious gladiator who defeated all who stood in his way. The myth of Maradona became bigger than the man, and his fall, like his rise, was to be a global spectacular. The 1990 World Cup. As fate would have it in the semi-finals, Argentina were drawn against the hosts, Italy, in Naples. We woke up. At 11, and as usual, Diego put some music on. It was before the game against Italy, and the game was in Naples. We were confident of winning, but despite the presence of Diego, the atmosphere in Naples was tense. When we drew back the curtains in our hotel, we saw our national flag torn to shreds. Diego was furious. If you insult Diego to his face, he can take it. But this was behind his back. He called all the journalists and showed them the torn flag. He said Italians were like nothing, and all hell broke loose. The match went to a penalty shootout. In an extraordinary twist, it fell to Maradona to take the deciding penalty in front of the very crowd that had adored him for years. It was the ultimate footballing sin. Maradona had knocked Italy out of the World Cup. The local hero had betrayed the national cause. In the final, it was Argentina's turn to suffer, with the whole Italian public turning against them. West Germany won with a late penalty. It was the end of Italy's love affair with Maradona. The Italian press now set about exposing the idol's feet of clay. There were allegations that he had fathered an illegitimate child. Ti portano in prima pagina, che cosa hai da dire rispetto a questa vicenda? Parla, parlare con il mio avvocato. Ma della partita possiamo parlare della no, partita? No, neanche per la partita, mai più. Scandal followed scandal. There were stories that the highly paid star wasn't turning up to train. Worse, there were alleged mafia links and lurid tales of all-night sessions in brothels. On the pitch, Maradona seemed to spend more time arguing than playing. 
Naples began to fail. Within six months, the saint had become a fallen idol. I kept telling everyone that what Diego does in his own time is his business. I reminded them that Diego was number one and without him they were nothing. It was players from Argentina and the rest of Latin America that had given them everything and their debt to them could not be measured. Maybe they think that they are superior, but they will never be like Diego. More was to come. In 1982, the clean living young man, fresh from Argentina, had starred in an anti-drugs video for Spanish youth. But now his message had a hollow ring. The star was found to have taken cocaine. The Italian authorities banned him for over a year and the role model was slammed as a hypocrite. A depressed Maradona went back to the bright lights of Buenos Aires. Within three months, his enemies in Argentina had their greatest coup. The authorities ensured that the media were on hand when Maradona was arrested high on cocaine. It was the biggest story in years. Just over a year after parading his wealth at his wedding, Maradona seemed hell-bent on self-destruction. sino que me gusta afrontar, afrontar los problemas. El problema es cuando no, cuando estás, eh, cuando estás muerto y, y estás con la duda de no, poder, de no poder afrontar eso. Entonces yo le digo que se queden, que se queden con el Maradona jugador de fútbol, que con el Maradona hombre convivo yo 24 horas por día. Bien hecha, tres, va. Maradona's playing days may be over. Today, the team he manages, Mandiju of Corrientes, are up against it. They face their fourth match under Diego as they fight relegation. They've yet to win a game. Time is running out for Mandiju and Maradona. Their opponents, a top Buenos Aires club, are managed by an old friend and teammate. Diego is someone who thrives in adversity. It doesn't matter how often he's knocked, he always bounces back. And that is because of his immense self-esteem. He is a winner in everything. That is why I now fear a small team like Mandiyu, because not only do we have to beat them, but also Maradona. The authorities relent and lift their touchline ban on Maradona, the unqualified manager. But true to form, Mandiyu soon go a goal down.
Closer to the pitch, the manager is closer to controversy. The referee sends him back to the stands for swearing. When Maradona disputes the charge, the entire management team are ordered off. An enraged Maradona is escorted back to the stands. Against all expectation, Mandiju score an equaliser. At last, Maradona seems to be working miracles. But what God gives with one hand, he takes away with another. In the very last minute, Mandiju go another goal down. The result, a 2-1 defeat. It seems Mandiju are doomed to relegation after all. To Maradona, it is one more injustice, orchestrated by the authorities who want to hound him out of the game. Well, what happens is that the men also cry, right? And this also gives me the idea that they want and that today is the point of the game to understand a lot of things, to understand the double messages that there are inside of the football. Porque no se puede entender por qué nos echa Baba a nosotros. No se puede entender por qué echa Alvarenga teniendo un partido directo, directo con, con Belgrano de Córdoba el domingo a nosotros, cuando Alvarenga no estaba ni molestado. Entonces, esto tiene una doble lectura impresionante. Yo quisiera que Baba lo explique. Si ustedes se lo van a preguntar, ojalá que se lo explique y lo, se lo explique bien. ¿Cuál es el doble mensaje, Diego? No, es uno de los pocos seres humanos en el mundo. Diego es uno de los pocos que dice lo que siente, who says what no, he feels, no matter where he is. Even when he's down, he still says what he feels. I place great importance on whatever he has to say, because it is easy to talk when you're at the top, but when you're at the bottom, it takes courage to speak out. Even in defeat, Maradona has to pose for photographers. For all his resilience, no one thought he'd survive after his drugs bust in Buenos Aires but he would defy all the odds yet again. Banned for 15 months for cocaine abuse, Maradona seemed happy to retire from football. He'd won the highest honours in the game and made himself a fortune. Away from the spotlight, a quiet family life beckoned. Al principio le daba más importancia porque tampoco estaba metida en el en el ambiente en ese medio, pero ahora no. Como sé la persona que tengo al lado, no, ya no me importa lo lo que ni escucho lo que dice. But fate held one more twist for Maradona. He was soon to face pressure to compete again at the highest level. At the end of 1993, a desperate Argentina wanted Maradona back. They were in danger of not making it to the World Cup Finals in the United States. Flanked by his daughters on his first comeback appearance, Maradona was hailed as a national saviour. Si yo vuelvo, vuelvo porque, porque yo sentía que tenía que volver y porque yo tenía fuerza para volver. Quería demostrar a todo el mundo que todo lo que decían que yo estaba muerto, que yo puedo seguir teniendo responsabilidad, que yo puedo seguir teniendo facilidad para el entrenamiento, puedo seguir sufriendo con los entrenamientos como lo hice toda mi vida y por el amor de la gente. Porque en esos 
subidas, bajadas, subidas, bajadas, que lo tiene todo el mundo, me acusaron a mí de ser el peor. Pero la gente no se, no se, la, no se la creyó. Y la gente me dio la, 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 la fuerza interior como para volver. Indifference and scorn had turned overnight to adulation, but the full weight of national expectation now rested on Maradona's shoulders. Diego is so famous that obviously he can't live a normal life, and that is why sometimes he reacts the way he does. The only way of understanding the pressure he is under is to be in his shoes. After each World Cup, I felt some of that pressure. The love of the people can be so overpowering. Sometimes you could scream for a peaceful moment. Everyone wants a piece of Diego, an autograph, a photo, anything. And he has had this attention since he was just 16. That's a lot of years, and I think anyone would get tired of so much fame. Maradona has always been relentlessly pursued by the media. In Argentina, his lapses are leapt on by his critics. To them, the poor boy made good belongs in the gutter. In 1994, midway through training for his World Cup comeback, Maradona pulled out, claiming he couldn't take the pressure anymore. For two days, the media laid siege to his house. When they ignored his repeated requests to leave him alone, Maradona cracked and opened fire with an air rifle. <laughs> Journalists paraded their wounds. Four of them filed charges. Maradona seemed more likely to spend the summer in prison than playing the World Cup. But despite the shooting, calls persisted for him to return for his country. Even the president begged him to come back. To the fans' relief, Maradona relented. Within weeks, he was back in training. Argentina went on to qualify, captained by a maestro who'd lost none of his skills. On the eve of their opening game in the United States, Diego Maradona had a dream, just as he'd done as a child in Fiorito. 
soñé de que hacía el primer gol con Grecia y, y me venía a, a abrazar Janine eh, Hidalgo, una cosa, una cosa que, que, que la soñé y bueno, que Janine que Hidalgo no, no podrán entrar a la cancha seguramente, pero, pero fue un sueño muy lindo, soñé que le hacía un gol a Grecia. The dream had come true. The prodigal son was riding high once more. But shortly afterwards, Maradona failed a routine drugs test. It revealed traces of ephedrine, a banned performance booster. In view of this decision, FIFA will make a ruling on the disciplinary aspects of the case after this World Cup. And until the case is finally settled, Diego Maradona remains suspended from all footballing activity. No quiero dramatizar, pero créeme que me cortaron las piernas. Me cortaron las piernas a mí, le cortaron las piernas a mi familia, a los que estaban al lado mío. Exacto. Los que están al lado mío, los que siguen estando al lado mío. Digo los que estaban porque estábamos jugando todo el mundial. Ahora nos sacaron del mundial, nos sacaron de la ilusión. Por sobre todas las cosas, a mí creo que me sacaron del fútbol definitivamente porque no, no creo que, que quiera otra revancha. ¿no? Tengo los brazos caídos, tengo, tengo todo el alma destrozado. No puede. No, 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 pero le prometí a mi, a mi mujer que no iba a llorar. Y le prometí a mis hijas, por sobre todas las cosas, que no puede hablar. Pero eh, lo único que quiero que quede claro a los argentinos que, que no me drogué, que no, que no corrí por la droga, corrí por el corazón y por la camiseta. Nada más. ¿Qué te dijeron tus compañeros? Lloraron conmigo. Y nada más. The incident brought shame on the team, who failed to get beyond the second round. Some of Maradona's most loyal fans deserted him. ¿Qué pasó? Que tomamos, eh, fuimos a comprar un, un frasco de un frasco porque se nos había acabado el que teníamos en Argentina y que tenía efedrina. Yo la tomé, fui a hacer el control antidoping tranquilamente, saltó la efedrina y bueno, pero eh, que, esto, que esto quede bien claro. Yo, yo tuve muchos problemas con la FIFA y se te agarraron de la efedrina para matarme. Pero, pero creo que cuando se habla de reincidencia, no es reincidencia. Reincidencia se llama cocaína y esto fue efedrina. La efedrina no te puede levantar ni un dedo. ¿Entendés? Entonces, ahí es ahí donde la gente juzga y prejuzga y dice la suya. Fútbol ha sido Maradona's life, pero esta noche todos esperan ver el fin de su breve carrera como manager. Mandiju face Independiente, the national champions. No one gives them a chance. Defeat will make relegation a formality. The champions are given a disputed penalty. Once again, Maradona is drawn into controversy. His team go 1-0 down. Urged on by their manager, Mandiju fight back for an unlikely equaliser. <laughs> Astonishingly, Mandiju now press for victory.
But another questionable decision leads to a second goal for Independiente. Once more, Mandiju are defeated. Maradona's conduct after the game was to give new ammunition to his many critics. Le había gastado el bolsillo y no le iba a pedir a nadie, ni a Cruz. Pero esto, esto, que quede bien claro, que es un afán, que es un choreo. Y lo digo, lo, lo digo a cara descubierta, ¿eh? yo no me tapo, yo no me tapo para decir lo que estoy diciendo. Defying the comprehensive ban by the football authorities, Maradona has recently been playing in fundraising games for charity. So, yo creo que los periodistas a veces que dicen Maradona es falso porque dice una cosa hoy y hace otra cosa mañana, no. Yo dijo que mi que, que mi cuerpo me pida. Yo dejo que mi mente se libere. ¿Por qué? ¿Por, qué si, ¿Por qué si hoy quiero ser técnico no voy a poder ser técnico? ¿Quién me lo impide? ¿Quién me va a impedir mañana si yo quiero salir a una cancha? ¿Quién me lo va a impedir? ¿Me lo va a impedir el presidente de la nación? No, es imposible. Porque eso no se domina. Porque si no seríamos todos robots. ¿Entendés? Yo, yo soy de carne y hueso. Yo soy de carne y hueso. Me equivoco como todo el mundo. Pero que tengo aciertos, también tengo aciertos. Y por sobre todas las cosas, hay una cosa que tengo muy clara y se la, y se la enseño siempre a mis hijos. La libertad y el sentimiento no se compran. No se compran. Muchas gracias, Diego. Perfecto. A comer pizza. Hasta luego. Maradona resigned as manager of Mandiju when the club's president refused to apologize for insulting the players. 
now in charge of one of the top Argentinian sides racing at Buenos Aires. He's already signed a contract to play professionally once his ban is over. Forever a controversial figure, Maradona still faces a possible prison sentence for the shooting of four journalists. Two weeks ago, Maradona resigned as manager of Racing FC. He is now considering an offer to manage and eventually play for Pele's former club in Brazil, Santos.